Today, Nancy Pelosi wants uh, the United States House to vote on this $1.6 trillion omnibus spending bill. It's 2,700 pages, as you can see. <laughs> Well, the man who actually tried to read the bill before he voted on it, a noble concept, I know, uh, Texas Congressman Pat Fallon. Sir, welcome back to the program. Morning, Carl. How are you? Uh, I, 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 you sent me this video last night, and I just I, I died laughing. It's like about 10 minutes long. I'm going to tweet it out, but I wanted to give you a chance to recap it here. Uh, it was a bit therapeutic for you, I think you can see. Is somebody, you know, <laughs> you were like, come on, guys. Like, I got this at 1.30 a.m., and now you want me to vote on it, what, eight hours later? Well, yeah, Carl, as you saw, it was 2,700 pages, and it didn't exactly read like uh, Game of Thrones or something like that. It was, a, it, was, it was tough business. But what, what got me about it was it was a $1.6 trillion spending package, and it didn't have one red cent of new money for more in, uh, enhanced Border Patrol enforcement, either uh, personnel or material. It didn't have one red new cent for immigration hearing facilities because we're not going to be able to implement uh, properly anyway, wait in Mexico, the wait in Mexico policy that the judiciary has ordered unless we have increased capacity there. But it did, Carl, but it did include $50 million for a Coast Guard museum. I love the Coast Guard. I'm sure you do too. But that's the kind of priorities that were just, you know, backwards. $40 million for the Kennedy Center, $50 million for NASA, to be environmentally compliant. They shoot rockets into space. I don't know if they're going to be working with Captain Kirk on that or whatever. <laughs> well, Carl, you also... $781 million for the People's Republic of the District of Columbia, and I could go on and on and on. No, you do go on, and that's why this video is so important. One of the things that you talked about is it was like $11 billion for some UN panelists. Oh, yeah, that was going to be some... Yeah, billions of dollars All right, for panelists at the uh, UN for intergovernmental inter studies or something, some such, they were going to actually even include $15 billion for additional COVID 3.0 uh, funds, even though 400 billion that had been authorized last year and in 2021 has left unspent. They did Lord. finally pull that out at the last minute. That oh, thank that thank God. I mean, $11 billion for UN panelists. I mean, what, could, what, what could possibly be a better investment than that? I want to get real quick what, what, after this abortion of a spending bill. Um, but the MIGs, uh, the, the situation we're seeing with Ukraine, um, it, was, it was just crazy to me. In one hand, you have Kamala Harris going over to Poland saying, we are with you, we stand with you, we are here for you. And then in the other hand, you have Price and, and Biden. They're all saying, well, we're not giving you the MiGs. Cancel that deal. We don't want to incur this. And Poland's like, Russia's moving west. We are to the west. Why, why won't you let this go through? What's your take on it? I, I mean, I, I would have accepted the MiGs absolutely. I thought Poland was being bold. They had 28 MiGs. They, what they wanted to do was give them to us. We bring them to Germany, and then we transfer them over to the Ukraine. And, it, and they made it. The administration made it sound like we were going to be arming them yeah. and, you know, having hot missions taking off from Germany into the Ukraine. That's not the case at all. We are simply yeah. facilitating the delivery of equipment. Which, and what? Not sorry, to interrupt Carl, you, Congressman, but did the yeah. irony of the U.S. brokering a deal where we would take MiG 29s from Poland, fly them mm -hmm. east to Germany and then do something with them, put them on a notebook, and then go back to Ukraine is just totally bizarre to me. I'm driving my camera guy nuts going back and forth there. What do you make of this? <laughs> well, what Biden has done is he's allowed Putin to deter him instead of d deterring Putin. Right. Uh, I mean, that, that's unbelievable to me. And he's drawing these artificial red lines on himself. Mm -hmm. You should be, you should have a degree of ambiguity in your policy to keep your adversary guessing. And he's not doing that at all. Uh, I, listen, we need to get, and as you know, we need to get as much asymmetrical war material into the hands of the Ukrainians as possible. Sniper rifles, plastic explosives, anti-tank mines, the harpoons, the anti-ship missiles, the stingers, the anti-air, the javelins. thats They've been doing a hell of a job with those against the tanks. But give them light machine guns, the American equivalent of the RPG, mm -hmm. and give them plenty of ammo because they are fighting like hell and we got to do everything we can to give them the yeah. uh, supplies they need. Speaking of fighting, um, Iran, allegedly, has launched a rocket attack on the American consulate in Iraq. Now, Iran has always been a pretty much a bad guy since 1979. They were at war with us, as one of our guests said earlier. Uh, we haven't been at war with them, but they've been at war with us. And mm -hmm. they launched this attack 
I know from being in Iraq, there was a lot of Iranian influence there, money, explosives, et cetera. What do you make of this? Well, I, I think it's rather ironic that it occurred a uh, day or so after the EU and the United States mm -hmm. suspended the talks with the uh, for, for, to renew the Iranian nuclear deal. And also the uh, in Tehran, they were saying that they were going to retaliate in some form or fashion mm -hmm. from a mi missile strike that happened in Syria by the Israelis. So yeah. what I think they'll, they'll do is they'll tell their people inside of Iran that, hey, look at that. We hit back at the great Satan. But it, to the world, they're going to say, oh, that was just a rogue element out in Western Iran. Sorry about that. We don't know really who did it. Right. Well, Congressman Pat Fallon, uh, I'll catch you later. We'll rendezvous at the Coast $50 million Coast Guard Museum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.